Yep, I think of good. Okay, welcome to chapter 20. Thank you. You need to share your screen. You have not shared your screen yet. Yeah. So, uh, and this. So, what, welcome to chapter 20 and symbols of models. So, this is uh, course five study models with our uh, book club. There's quite um, so other four courses that uh, have been through this um, chapter. But uh, so I decided for, for this session to um, have a look at special type of data. Uh, so more precisely, uh, I'm talking about the data that have been just released um, on Tidy Tuesday, for Tidy Tuesday data this week. And so we have a patient's risk profiles. Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me uh, properly? Yes, can I can hear you properly, yeah. Okay, great. So, and so this uh, um, data uh, has, uh, has been put uh, available uh, because there is uh, the uh, our pharma conference going on. Uh, actually, starts uh, so we had uh, um, a week of workshops, uh, and it actually starts today at four uh, o'clock p.m. So like in a, in about an hour. Uh, and so here is a data set uh, which is um, which provides. Uh, patient ID, uh, the age group um, going from zero, uh, so zero to four, five to nine, so, so two, uh, what is it, 90, 94. Okay, so we have patients, but they are all uh, already, this data set is already been settled to uh, dummy variables. And then I'll, I'll show you what I mean. There are um, information about the sex and uh, the, uh, a long list of causes, uh, such as, I don't know, arterial fibrillation, um, occurrence of anxieties, uh, anemia. Uh, so all causes uh, that um, basically interact to uh, some, some risks, okay, some, some risks of, of such as, uh, I don't know, risk of dementia, of migraine, uh, or acute tranquility, uh, and so on and so forth. So basically, uh, I show you my, my slack, uh, sorry, my uh, studio, because then you can um, have a look at the uh, how did that set actually like? So I start loading uh, the diversity study models and I set study models to prefer to avoid any conflict. Then tidy Tuesday are and I load the data, uh, which I call it raw data. If you have, if you got any questions, just interrupt me and so we go to it. Um, Okay, this, uh, this is, um, I call it raw, because then I make some, some adjustments. Uh, and as you can see, I selected the first two patients. And as you can see, we have uh, uh, 100 uh, predictors, which means that that's not actually correct, okay? Yes, as I said, we have age groups, Um, as I said, uh, we have uh, age groups, we have sex, we have uh, uh, causes, and we have prediction of risks. Okay, so and they are all uh, now um, already settled as to be dummy variables. 
Okay, and then um, I show you what I uh, what I mean with this. This is my raw data. Okay, if we have a look at this uh, raw data, as I show, uh, so we have a pretty good risk and some. Uh, Ah, okay, I discounted my computer, but I saved the model results, so we are good to go. Okay. Uh, let's load the data. And these are uh, the first two patients. Now, um, if I uh, use a pivot longer, okay, I transform, uh, I put this, all these age group column uh, in, in one uh, column. And then have a look at uh, what are the different groups. Okay, so usually uh, what, what we expect as a data set, okay, uh, that a, a good practice for a data set is that um, we have one observation. Each row is an observation, and each column contains a type of a variable, okay, a type of predictors. Here we have a, a, a section of predictors for many variables. This, in this case, we have 19 age groups. Then we have 14 cause of risks and so on and so forth for the um, predictions of risk. And um, as you can see, the prediction of, of risk are 14, and we have different type of uh, risk, uh, which this data set provide um, a probability, okay, that this risk can arise and um, based on some causes, okay, that I mentioned before. And so if we do some people longer, so basically we do a bit little transformation of this white that I said, which contain more um, than one variable to go on each corner. And we transform this uh, to in a um, more, um, so in a way that we, we can understand it a bit better, so it, it, that it follows basically what are the big practices of a data set. So we can see that we now have the uh, patient's ID, the predicted risk ID, okay? It's here are the various um, predicted risk, and we have the predicted risk uh, probability, the age group ID, the sex ID and the causes ID. Okay, as you can see, uh, what we can do with this data set is um, uh, apply because this um, this chapter basically the um, the purpose of this chapter is to be able to manage the result of many predict predictions. Okay, prediction that comes they come from. Uh, me, uh, the result of fitting the, the fitting of many models. Okay, so and also uh, these models also had cross validation uh, resamples. So we basically what we are going to to do is now stacking uh, the result the prediction the result of these uh, many models cross validation resamples into an average back value. Of the results for each model, and then we stack this value. We fit this uh, this this um, mean value, this this estimated mean values again to to do a filter selection. Okay, based on the best value prediction. Uh, and so I think it's um, you are now not seeing. Uh, because um, if we ever look at this um, uh, at the chapter, okay, what what 
uh, they mention is that uh, uh, so basically they use the concrete data set, okay, uh, and these are the results of the, the, the data set. So we are going to do the same thing, but with this uh, new data set. Is, uh, have you got any questions? Yes, uh, I think I, the question, can you share that um, book, the book, the tidy model books again? Yeah, I go to the chapter. Yeah. Okay, 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 yeah. So that means what they are trying to do is that after fitting the model, like for back three, mass one, mass two, they now retrieve all the predictions. They will create different columns for different model prediction before they now stack that model using the stack package. Okay, that's that's not exactly uh, what's not, not, not mm. It's close, but it's not exactly that. So I'll show you uh, in practice what, what's happening. Uh, and so uh, um, I'm, I'm going there. Okay, so this is the fact that we have reshaped, but we actually don't need to reshape because the raw data that has been provided was very good. Because usually, if we got this data set, what we need to do is to make of this character uh, variables, all dummy variables, is that right? Yeah? Yes, yes, that is in the preprocessing step. Exactly. So now, this data set, this raw data that I showed you before, for example, for these two patients are already provided with dummy variables. So when we jump into tidy models, we actually use the raw data, okay? And not our uh, resettled data set. Okay, this is, uh, I reset, um, reshaped this data set to show you what is inside because that was very uh, easy to draw, okay? So now um, we, we use, what is it? The raw data, uh, uh, which provides already dummy variables, okay, and select only the dementia. So we like to select only as a predicted risk, only the risk of dementia, okay, uh, and so we want to predict the probability that a, pa a patient can get dementia based on sex, age group, and causes. Okay, that's, that's uh, exciting, very interesting. So from this raw data, which is uh, this data set here with all dummy variables, we select all the columns that contain dementia. Okay, As if I do this, it is just one, thing. what is it? Okay, if I do this, this is just one column, okay? And now I have all the prediction um, for the risk of dementia for each patient. We have 100 patients, okay? Now I uh, see by, column by, all the other, all the rest of the, the data set, and I name this new data set dementia. Dementia is uh, uh, basically my new data that I'm going to, to use uh, within my ensemble of models. Um, and so now, as you can see, we have 100 patients and 100 uh, predictors, uh, which are already being set up to be used within tidy models. And so we set the seed, we do initial split, the training, testing, and the fold. Okay. Yeah.
So having done that, uh, what I did here is going back to chapter 15, many models, because the chapter mentioned exactly that the um, concrete data set uh, was being used uh, starting from chapter 15. So um, I basically copied and paste uh, the code from chapter uh, chapter 15 and applied to my new data set, dimension. Uh, and so, yeah, that is. Have you got any questions? No, no, it's okay. clear, yes. Okay. So basically, our, our data set is now uh, split between training and test. And we have some calls. Uh, what we do now is uh, applying a recipe, um, a recipe uh, and we want to be, we like to predict uh, predict the risk of dementia based on all the other uh, variables. Okay. Then I updated the role of person ID to be just an ID because otherwise it doesn't make much sense. Then I did step normalize all predictor, step correlation, uh, which uh, uh, basically what does is selecting out. So basically uh, it, it doesn't take, take consideration of any predictor, which uh, results to have a correlation which is higher than 90%. Uh, and then step zero variance. Okay, all, all this is uh, done after a step normalize. Mm, it's nice uh, to have a look at this uh, little um, step here. No? Okay, if I use PrEP and JUICE, we know that, for example, if I apply PrEP and JUICE here, we can see what's happened to our data set. Now we don't have dummy variables anymore but what we got are normalized values which means you know, do you know what what that means basically uh considering standard uh, standardized variables okay uh now i can check for the correlation and the zero variance so i've put this on this order okay and this is my normalized recipe okay in fact uh, we have an id 98 predictors and one column and, and we can see how it looks here okay now let's apply many models okay just as in chapter 15 okay so we load the rules and baguette packages and we do a linear regression, a neural network, a MARS, a support vector machine, um, support vector machine uh, with um, uh, polynomial, uh, um, neural, uh, nearest neighbors, and then a cart, a bag cart. A random forest, uh, XG boost, uh, and a cubist. Okay, all all of those um, models. Those ones that provide a parameter, those parameters have been will be tuned. So we we actually do in machine learning. Okay. So we are going to tune all these models on this data. Okay, uh, on top in the code in the chapter, there was this uh, update for, uh, let's, run this. let's run this. So there was this update for the neural network parameters. And so we basically update the parameters to, to be from one to 27. So we run this as well, because that would be, a wider range, uh, and so uh, then apparently takes a while, but 
this, this is nothing, that there is no computation, as you know, but this is just uh, all model specifications. There is no computation at all. Um, then we start setting up the workflow. And what we use is our uh, normalized recipe. So the first one, if you don't, if you, if you have a spread and resistance, please interrupt me. Yeah? So we're starting uh, setting up a workflow set, which uh, basically it's a function, okay, that allows you to um, set up a workflow for more than one model. Okay, so I use a workflow set and then a workflow map to build a workflow of workflows. Okay, so uh, I call it this normalize because the pre-processing <coughs> recipe that I'm going to use is the normalize recipe. Yeah? I'm going too fast. <laughs> No, it's okay, it's okay. That means in the normalized recipe, if we do not want to rename it, we can just pass in the normal normalized recipe and we leave it that way in the workflow sets. Yeah, basically uh, we have, uh, this is our um, recipe, okay? That we just, uh, this one here, normalized recipe. So we made a recipe. Uh, predicted the risk of dementia to all the predictors on the training set, and then update the role, and then step normalize, step core, step zero value. So we call it normalize recipe. And then we set the, all the model specifications, uh, and they are there. Now what we do uh, is we set a workflow set where inside this workflow set, there is one recipe, which is our normalized recipe, and one, two, three, four models, type of models. The support vector machine, radian, support vector machine polynomial, K near, mm, neural, uh, near neighbors, uh, neural network, okay? And so we run this workflow set. This is again, uh, there is no computation. It's just a settlement of something that will go inside a model computation. Okay, there is no computation here. And so we have this normalized workflow set. We add the option this is uh, that we specified here for the neural networks because we have specified, we, we are not tuning the hidden unit, but we have specified a range for the hidden unit. And so we update this to be an option add for the neural network parameters. And so our normalized workflow set is this. Then what's happened is that um, we like to add another recipe to our model without maybe any form of pre-processing. So we don't standardize, we don't consider correlation, we don't consider zero variance, nothing. So how we do that? We use this function, workflow variables, which basically just set the variables. It's like formula or something like that. So the outcome is the predicted risk of dementia and the predictors are everything. And that's it. So we put this inside a workflow set as we did it before, and we call it no preprocessing. And so this is model bars. And this will be applied to March, CART, CART packet, random forest, boosting, and tubes. And this will be no pre processing workflow set. So we have two workflow sets normalized and not pre processing. Okay. Then we put them together. All workflows, we bind the rows 
no prepossessing and normalized. Okay, and then here this is just a red ragged, uh, so like simplification of uh, to be able to read the model's name easily. Okay, so they basically run this. Should we find one? Because I didn't run. Okay. And so this is um, normalized and all workflows. And this is it. all models, 10 models. We are going to use 10 models with two recipes. No preprocessing, so that's our response variable across all the predictors and the normalize. Okay, and so this is our whole workflow. Now we are going to tune, so applying machine learning, all the other parameters of all the models within our whole workflow. Okay, we apply parallel processing and then we are going to, to use the grid. Okay, grid. First, we set the grid control and then the grid result. Okay, here it's basically uh, what's happened. So we have all workflow and we apply workflow map. Okay, this is the workflow map that we apply. These are work sets that we have put together. This is our work from up. This is the, the seed, because there is some randomized procedures. The poles, I've set the grid to five, it should be 25, but it will take too long. So um, we basically, uh, I, I put this to five just for educational purposes. And then the control, uh, it's, it's needed because in the control, you save the prediction. You set the parallel over everything. That means that you are going to cross uh, all the information within the information, and then you save the result. If you don't do that, this, you cannot retrieve your predictions so this control option is important. And then I save the results here, which can be uh, retrieved because I restarted my computer. Like that. And I put this to grid results as it is. Okay, so this is now the model um, with grids, with all results, okay? These are all uh, the model results. And we can see if we run this thing, we see, we run the results. And we can see uh, the values, okay? So now I go forward. Um, we, we see get that Mars performs, Mars part performs better across uh, uh, compared to the others. And here we have some information about the other parameters. And then we do the raisin. So basically the raisin is what is used inside the stacking thing. So we do the same thing, raising things and everything. So I load the raisin results.
Okay. And so this is the, the racing results. Okay. Uh, and as well, the racing, I didn't spend too much time, but uh, so we did it in uh, the other uh, chapters. Uh, uh, basically, in this case, the workflow map uses the two race ANOVA. So basically, I'm uh, going to compare the estimation of all models uh, and consider uh, which one is um, the best one. Okay, the result is the same. So we have March and Cubis are first places. Finally, it's, uh, uh, we have 10 minutes left. So finally, we are stacking. Okay, so we finally apply what this, um, uh, the, the chapter. Okay. okay, so we load the library stack because this library, it's basically, um, provide a function, which is stack. So let's have a look at this function. That allows us to ensemble, uh, to model ensemble, which means, um, have a look at the um, initial, this initialize a stack, okay? That means that we stack all the prediction results, we, because we have prediction and cross-validation prediction. So we use just the average value of the result for each model, and then we do a put the selection, just this. Okay, so this function initializes the data stack object. So we need to make it a stack object using the stack function. And uh, we, then we add the candidates, which are the models that we use. And uh, uh, okay, so we have our uh, dementia. So the stack, uh, to the stack function, we add the race result. This one here, okay. The racing thing. Um, we, this is very fast, so we can just. This is not. Okay, so as you can see, there is some uh, information here which says two things. Um, ah, okay, so this is now a data stack uh, with 10 models definition and 24 candidate members. So basically, we have one March, four cast models. So as I said, we did for each of this 10 model, 10 full cross-validation. We did the raising, and so we selected some of the best model results. And so we have one mark, four cards, one card packet, one random forest, four support vector machine, uh, polynomial, near neighbors, neural net, and so on. So we have 24, candidate members. Okay, so we need to make a put a selection of this um, model selection result. It's at the seed, and we use this function, blend prediction. Okay, this blend prediction. Basically, what does is determine stacking coefficients from a data stack. So evaluate a data stack by fitting. So it basically fits a regularized model 
on the assessment prediction from each candidate member to predict the two outcomes. Is that, do you have any question? No. Yeah. Yeah, no question for now. I think uh, this line is clear. I think mm -hmm. where I missed the step, I was thinking maybe we, we are going to, but I now see that we have to fit uh, the multi model. I think it's clear. There is no question. Okay. Um, and so what we do is now blending this stack. Uh, what's happened here is, uh, as I said, we are going to fit a regularized model on the assessment prediction from each candidate method. In the chapter, Julia specifies that when we do cross-validation, okay, we, we do not just have a training and testing set, okay? So we have a full set, we have assessment, we have also, we should divide the training set into uh, an, uh, other two data sets, which is one of those is an assessment. So basically it's a, uh, it's a, um, it's a full subdivision of the training set that we use to assess our model results. And then we finally apply to the testing set. But to do, this is done to do not use the testing uh, set uh, under any means uh, more than once. Okay, it's used just to, uh, to the very, uh, last week. Okay, so we use this uh, um, dementia stack and we blend the prediction and then we auto plot the results to see. Okay, so we have that the number of members are now dropping down. Okay, they are six. Uh, the uh, residual uh, um, um, the uh, RMC, okay, uh, for each member. Um, it's um, uh, basically uh, almost the same except for, for one of the members. Then we can see that the penalties, which is one of the other parameters, is basically helping us to understand when the penalty uh, is the best, such as in this case, for each member. So which one of the members has, um, how, how many members this would, be, would you need um, and what penalty is the best for achieving the best model? Okay, so we have the residual sum of square, the RMC, and the number of members. Yeah. And these are all mean values, the mean values of the, the, of the value. We can see that uh, uh, from we started, as I said, with 24 candidates. So we left with three. Near neighbors, Mars and Cubis. Okay, the nearest neighbors are the highest rate. The Cubis, the lowest. If we set um, a different range for the penalty, we see different results. Okay. This is, uh, I didn't change this uh, at all. Uh, you might want to put some uh, more time and, and yeah, adjust uh, this value in case it's needed. And so we can see if, if we change the penalty, the, Light change a bit, but the penalty is always around here. 
have to just do that. Yeah. Okay, now let's oopsie. Now let's check which model provides the largest contributions to the assembly. And so if we do auto plot, uh, and then we consider the weights, uh, we see that years neighbors, Mars and Cubis rules are uh, so basically nearest neighbors is the one that um, provide the largest contribution as well as Mars and Cubis. So we now need to fit these three winners. So from 24, we left the three. So we fit this three. And then we have a look at the matrix. And we predict and bind false. And then we have a look at the matrix. It doesn't take uh, very long. This may most probably be the same. I've used a three. So these are the results. So our model is. 88%. Uh, this is the number square. Yeah. So I'm not sure if I pass it through um, very well, but I thought that the best way would be have a look at different data and apply the game. Basically, what's happened. This is the chapter. So, in this case, uh, of the concrete data set, the boost, boosting, uh, multi direct perception, and qubits were the first three. On top of that, just boosting was the one that provided the most information. And so, basically, here is the, is the equation, and they, what, what they do is basically taking this uh, weight, the assembled what that is provide you with the weights that each model uh, provides. So then you are going to multiply this weight for the prediction. And so then uh, you fit and reduce the matrix. So this is uh, everything for all I got.